Conservative Democrats, uh, particularly white people in the South, are now Republicans. So you've had a big change in the Democratic Party in this regard. And um, it's moved quickly. Part of it explains some of the campaign strategy of the Clinton campaign. Certainly was reflected in what we saw with nascent ideas of this in the 2008 Obama campaign. But over the past seven years, we, there's been a big change in the the Democratic Party. And the Republican Party is going to feel a lot of pressure, or should. And like uh, Joe Scarborough was just amazed by it. They're going to feel pressure. But at the end of the day, they know where their bread is buttered. And it's buttered at the racist uh, milking and churning station. (laughs) (laughs) The most... I, I read. I, I turning into Thomas Friedman today. You are. Yeah, is no, there, a cab driver any, told yeah, me all this on the way you, in. You lost the cab driver anecdote. My pedicab driver. But the other part, the thing with that Friedman I take though, every day is to you'd work. have to synchron. You'd have to like mismatch a metaphor as well. It'd have to be like the butter that we churned out while we laid it in line for a JetBlue flight or something. Like, well, it, have to it be was like actually the, wrong the Uber place. of racist butter. It was the Uber of racist butter in a transformed global economy where we don't just trade, we actually synchronize every second. Now, so we had this argument uh, earlier from uh, Jeff Sessions and much of the Republican Party that this we have to get rid of DACA uh, because it's unconstitutional. For a lot of Republicans, the next question is, okay, so in other words, uh, the president will sign a legislative version of the DREAM Act. A Republican lawmaker, you'll you'll vote for a uh, statutory DREAM Act? Oh, no, actually we won't. We were just saying the unconstitutional thing, (laughs) so we didn't have to address the fact that we're uh, full-on bigots. To his credit, Steve King, who I think um, probably takes a certain amount of pride in his bigotry, at least has come up with something more creative. Don't you understand that while it is sadistic and cruel to take people who have been, who grew up in this country, many of them not even realizing maybe that they were undocumented, You think it's cruel because you're a normal human being, but when you're Steve King and your mind operates like a a computerized chess game, you're seeing that what might be sadistic to these people is actually benevolent to the rest of the world. Here he is on Breitbart Radio. Uh, another tweet you sent out this morning is former former DACA uh, in DACA ex, uh, apostrophe s DACA recipients will make great Peace Corps volunteers in their home countries. None uh, would take more hardship or risk than we ask of the Peace Corps. Um, can you explain that that tweet? Well, yes. I mean, the, you know, people are saying, well, you send these poor DACA kids back to a country that they never knew. And they, the, the language they don't speak, a place where they don't have any connections whatsoever. Um, mm-hmm. it, that's not true. That's how they paint it. They say, these are valedictorians. They're the salt of the earth. They're all good people, and they're the cream of the crop. And some of them do fit that category. But there's a lot of I'm them I'm sure that don't. some of them are and nice. So um, I'm just I'm making this point that if we shut off the DACA program, and mm-hmm. there are 800,000 of them in the United States today, they would deploy, and I use that word that way, back to their home territories most likely. And mm-hmm. they would go back there with a U.S. taxpayer-funded education. Many of them are college education. They mm-hmm. would have a top-notch English skills. They would understand how a free enterprise economy works, how a generally corrupt free society, first world works. They would have seen the transportation systems we have, the educational system, the research and development systems that we have, how civilized people interact with each other. 
all of that would go with them back to their home countries. Pause it. I just, I just want to, um, and you can dial it back. I just want to, you to play that how a civilized people interacts with each other. Well, I, I don't know where he thinks these people are from. I don't know. Maybe like we're sending back, you know, like people who were raised by wolves or in caves or something. But how a civilized people interact with each other. Incidentally, and, and of course the irony is we're, we're taking these people and deporting them out of the country because that's the civilized thing to do. But here we go. Best taxpayer funded education. Many of them are college education. They would have top-notch English skills. They would understand how a free enterprise economy works, how a generally corrupt free society, first world works. They would have seen the transportation systems we have, the educational system, the research and development systems that we have, how civilized people interact with each other. All of that would go with them back to their home countries. And wouldn't that be the best economic and cultural development a civilizational development that, say, Mexico could ever experience, be to get, if these are their best and brightest, some of them are, uh, mm -hmm. but it, just give it to the people that advertise DACA, and what if their words are right? Send them back home again. It'll have far more impact than you'll get out of Peace Corps volunteers. Well, I mean, if that's really the agenda, let's send, let's just send randomly the graduating class of, let's say, all the Ivy League schools uh, one, two, three, four. I think we already basically if have. Those three. are actually are the people that run places like Mexico, which is why they have so well, many problems. But we'll I get send, your point. Send them back. <laughs> send hundreds of thousands of them. Okay, yeah. Just not the ones that went to the Kennedy School. Right. Uh, that is... Also, I mean, I just... And I know you have the stat, but there's the enormous racism and obvious sub... And not even subtext that... I mean, he mentioned Mexico specifically, but some of these places that people are going to get sent back to are "quote unquote" first or second world countries, like in South Korea, right? The Philippines. I mean, it's a second yeah, world. Yeah, tens Poland. of thousands yeah. of them. I mean, the I think the certainly the majority of the uh, the folks be uh, Latin America. will be from Latin America, which is of course what he's really talking about. Three thousand from Poland. 5,000 from India, 15,000 from South Korea, 8,000 from the Philippines, 6,000 from Jamaica. Um, the vast majority are going to go back to Central America. Also, I don't think that any Not even go back. I mean, well, I guess go back. But, uh, you know, you're talking about after a long time. But, I mean, he doesn't, you know, the idea, I mean, just how depraved and psychotic to justify this stuff, it's it really is just he's stunning. A he's a racist sociopath, but I do I think that it in a I sometimes I, I understand the obvious reason why we pick examples when we talk about something like DACA of somebody who is say a valedictorian or has done everything right. But I at some point like I I I actually think yeah, there's a bigger point. Like you. You shouldn't have to be an extraordinary achiever for this program course, to cover you. And I course. actually think it's interesting that in his d despicable way, he's identifying a weakness with those sort of arguments that we identify like this extraordinary, exceptional example when really it's like, hey, maybe he's just, just a normal kid who got some B's and some C's. And maybe he's like, I don't know, not going to set the world on fire, but they were raised here. <laughs> They're a good person. Well, and it's disgusting to send them back to a place they don't know. It's a human rights abuse, regardless you, of who they are and how they did in school. I mean, I understand rhetorically why this is done. Yeah, and and I think, you know, uh, yesterday we got a call from Ron Reagan, who's an immigration lawyer, who... Um, doesn't like even the framing of were were brought here by no fault of their own. Right. As if their parents who are responding to the fact that economic opportunity has been swallowed up in Central America or they're afraid of getting murdered in the murder capital of the world. All due to our policies a function in many of, respects. Yes, of NAFTA, uh, you know, where an ear of corn in Mexico uh, made in Me grown in Mexico is twice as expensive as one that is grown in the United States. I mean, all of those things. Um, or even as if it's really that bad of an issue, like they're coming here to do something wrong. They're infecting us by their presence. 
Uh, the, all of those those framings are, there you are said problematic. It. They're infecting us by their presence. Right. That's what they're saying. Of course. What and he's, let he's, me just add. And I would add, too, that, um, you know, you see statistics like uh, one-third less likely to commit crimes than native-born uh, Americans. Uh, you know, uh, 92% employed, uh, which is a, pre a pretty impressive number for when you talk about average age of 26. All of this, yes, these things are cited as some way of basically trying to convince bigots that your bigotry is irrational. I don't know if that works, frankly. I think what it does is it increases the self-righteousness of, you know, folks like, uh, you know, the Joe Scarboroughs of the world. And it makes it a little bit easier maybe to create a narrative. So there's probably rhetorical value in it. But yes, largely speaking, of course. But I think it's like everything course. else. It's, every, it's the whole kind of means-testing well, culture. Same. It undermines the broader argument that everybody just has, should have basic guarantees and rights. And I, We see this with, with Muslim Americans, too, who are like... Yeah, exactly. They fought in the... You know, this guy, uh, you know, was, was in the military. He's earned his uh, American citizenship. Well... No, if you're Muslim and you're an American citizen, you don't have to earn your you, citizenship you, any more you than anybody it. else does because nobody does. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, I think also I like that what Hayes tweeted the other day, which is he said that um, if you've dr ever driven under the influence of anything, you've committed a more dangerous illegal action than anybody who if crossed the border. If you drugs, yeah. and not illegal drugs, but if you've bought drugs from Canada, if you're a senior citizen and you have gotten drugs from Canada via the internet, you have committed a uh, more serious crime. Right. right. Much more serious. It's a civil violation to enter into this country right. without documentation. And the vast majority, particularly of this subset of immigrants, um, only came in once, which means that they didn't, they, they, you know, if you get deported and come back, it becomes a um, more, uh, not, I don't know that it's a felony, but it becomes more criminal. Did you know that when Joe Scarborough was in Congress, he introduced a bill to uh, eliminate the United States' relationship with the U.N.? There would be a transitionary period, and then we wouldn't do things with the U.N. anymore. He's an internationalist. His, yeah, he's a, he's a really right. moderate. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.